up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go? A podcast about life in the music industry. I'm your host, Patrick Tarnowski. With me is the man, Super Gibby, wearing uh, his own merch because he's always. that cool. <laughs> I wish I had, like, I wish this was your face. I can make that happen. Either one of yours. Either one of yours. Because today, <laughs> we welcome Duncan from the band from Denver, Relate. Uh, Duncan, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Heck yeah. You got some fucking luscious hair, though. I just want to start off with that. Oh, man, thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty long right now. Honestly, dude, like, I want to cut it, but uh, we I <coughs> got a tour flyer design from this dude I know, and, like, we made a deal that in uh in exchange for the flyer design i wouldn't have to pay him but i had to model for like his wife's vintage 70s like clothing shop and so i'm like oh cool dude like you care if i cut my hair he's like well that kind of gives you the vibe so i'm in this weird like limbo just waiting to buzz it all off like don't, <laughs> don't do it photo shoot don't do it trust me don't do it gibby's got long hair too man yeah it oh, goes like he's got it he's just got it up right now his hair oh, goes down on. to like uh i'll, I'll show you Tony, oh, it's one. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> how many years? I don't think like other than like cutting off like a couple inches here and there. I don't think I've had like a proper haircut since like pre-COVID. Not, I think even longer than that. That's wow. crazy to just say though that it's that long and just pre-COVID. Like, yeah, that's. That's a lot of hair. And for those just listening, I guess you got to go to YouTube and watch because it's it's a mane. Do you use like is your shampoo? Do you use like tail and mane? You, should. you know, That's the horse shampoo. Name. I should. You should. <laughs> Honestly, the secret is I just put a lot of conditioner. Yep. Hey, like, I mean, I hear tail and mane gives a nice shine. <laughs> Like my shampoo Machine. bottles like this big, but my conditioner bottles like <laughs> <clears throat> that's wild, man. That is a that's that's some hair. Like I forget how much hair this dude has. It, so. It's all it's also like unnaturally deceiving because I usually like wear my hair back at work, but like I have like baby hairs that are like this big. So like people yeah. don't think it's very yeah. long. That's fair. That's fair. So Duncan, let's talk about the band here. You just let's really talk you, band. let's <laughs> talk about the band. You just released your latest single Sludge, February 13th. We tell did. us a little bit tell us a little bit about the song and how's the response been for it? Uh the response for Sludge, I mean, has been this has been the best like instant response we've ever had. Um people are like you know like we have the metrics on spotify and it's like like the little graph like looks just like that and so that's yeah. really cool um and i really think that's because like we've spent a lot of time building up um kind of like our back catalog of music and then yeah just through touring and playing shows like you know kind of creating like this uh I always feel weird saying like, like fan base, but like, you know, uh, like, like group of like supporters and listeners who are, uh, were interested to see it like pop up. So like, that's, that's been very, very cool. Um, and sludge is cool. Cause like, I guess like a little background on the band is that, uh, when relate was started, I started relate in, uh, it was 20, 2018. And yeah. at the time I was, I was playing bass in a band. I was living down in Phoenix, Arizona. And, uh, I had started writing a couple songs and I was like, well, these don't really fit that band. Um, so I'm just going to do like an acoustic thing. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to just book shows as Duncan. Right. Like, cause that's, that's always seemed weird to me. Uh, I don't, I don't sure. know. Why. Yeah. But, uh, I was like, well, I'll just, I'll call it something. And, uh, then, you know, like, people will think it's a band and they'll book me. Sorry, these dogs, man. Hey, Juno, Bruce, come on. <laughs> Juno and Bruce, man. Chill. Just just chill. They're both, like, uh, 
They're both German shepherds. I'm actually, uh, Bruce is my sister's dog and I'm house sitting for her right now. Um, okay. Then Juno's my dog, but they're siblings. So it's like together, they like, they're the two terrors. <laughs> With their powers combined. <laughs> yeah, their powers combined. But yeah, man. So like I, I started the band, um, like the band, <laughs> it, it was a solo yeah. project. Like it was just me and an acoustic guitar. And uh, I convinced it, like, one or two people to book me and then you know kind of like did a little bait and switch like I'd, I'd just be like yeah relate can play and they're like oh okay like they just assume that's a band and then I, I show up to the gig with like an acoustic guitar they were like where's everyone else I'm like oh it's just me and they're like, they're like bro this is like a hardcore show <laughs> like what are you doing but um it's okay if people dig it we'll still dig it yeah it you know it's, it's cool but I mean you know like fast forward to you know to COVID like 2020 that's when I I first recorded like the the proper relate ep where it was an acoustic uh collection of songs and i put that out in late 2021 and i had started writing some more songs and i'm like well like these are full band songs so i uh i met our guitarist zach on uh on facebook and him and i got together a couple times and we uh we hung out and um we hung out and like he was instantly like a good fit with me. Like we really complimented each other like uh, stylistically. And yeah. then uh, I had like the demos for our last EP chemical condition. And we kind of just built a band and got a couple dudes together. So I had basically written those songs um, and everyone uh -huh. I mean, out of their own part and made it so much more than what the original demos were. But yeah sludge was the first song that someone else had written um our drummer diego wrote sludge which i always think is really funny uh to say like you know like the old saying like it's like uh how does a drummer get kicked out of a band you know he goes hey guys let's try one of mine and <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious because uh, our drummer diego is a powerhouse <laughs> of a songwriter uh, he does all of our production and our mixing and like he's just a very talented dude so sludge was the first song that instrumentally um someone else had written and the prior single linger the whole band had written together that was like the first song we all really came together and wrote off of um off of like a single riff that i had right and so like it was it was a pretty big switch up right like from the initial batch of songs that we did um and it's been really cool to like see the response from that and yeah see that like you know at least to me like you know i'm biased but like it feels like it's a both musically and like lyrically and you know production wise it's just growth like it still feels like akin to the the prior songs but now it's like it's it's a lot more you know it's like it's more interesting uh parts wise and it's more interesting like musically so yeah man like the the response has been really good. Like we're we're absolutely like blown away. I mean, like truly blown away. Hell yeah, it's freaking awesome. Is Sludge gonna be like a uh, part of like a string of singles? Or are you just gonna put that like on an EP? Or what's going on? Well, what's going on? <laughs> as as I'm sure you guys are aware, the uh, the music industry is really different now compared to right. like any time in history um absolutely i mean like kind of like you know it's it's kind of like the 50s again right like we're like dudes were putting out singles in the 50s like that was like the big thing um yeah it was yeah and then you know the album kind of came you know more like as like a standard in like the 60s but uh we did a batch of i think it was nine songs we recorded drums for nine songs about a year ago and we uh we do drums in the studio with with my friend Nick. He owns a studio called uh, Rusty Sun Audio in Parker, Colorado. And um we did that and we've just kind of been slowly chipping away at the songs. So we kind of have a plan of attack now. Um, but I think we're we're only gonna release like five of the songs. And so we're kind of like we're dropping a few singles and then they'll all come out together on a collection like as an EP with like one or two more things. Okay. Okay. Right on. Sorry. My dog, now my dog is, is barking and going crazy. <laughs> oh, you're uh, all good, dude. I was hoping somebody would, you know, make her stop. 
but they, they got there. They got there. But <laughs> so <clears throat> we're talking about, you know, your start as like uh, just as you doing acoustic stuff. So once you became a full band, though, uh, I saw that you had a chance to perform with one of like my favorite bands from the like the mid 2000s. Uh -huh. and they on their anniversary yeah. tour for their iconic album, The Everglow. With that being said, what are some of your favorite moments from being in the band so far? Oh, dude, like. Well, it's funny you bring up that May show because, like, it's kind of a funny story. Like, we, like when we started the band, um, I think the first time all of all of the four of us, it was me, our guitarist, Zach, our guitarist, Tom, and our drummer, Diego. The first time the four of us were in a room together was probably January or late December of 22. No, 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 of 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it's the end of the year or the beginning of, of 2022. And that's the first time we all get in a room together. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was playing bass. I was singing and playing bass. And um, a friend of mine reached out to me and he's like, yo, like, uh, you, does your band want to play a show? You know, my band's having our going away show. And, you know, it was still kind of like in COVID time. This was like, it was February of 2022. And okay. I had come to the guys and I was like, hey, you know, do we want to play this show? Uh, we haven't really been a band very long, but like, there's enough songs here that like, you know, we have a set and like, everyone was like, yeah, like, let's, let's go ahead and do it. The funny thing about that is when my friend, uh, it was my friend Weston, when he asked me if my band wanted to play the show, it was a different band of mine that he was asking. And oh, okay. I, I think I confirmed the show. And then uh, after he's like, cool, you're confirmed. I'm like, yeah, by the way, it's not that band. It's it's Relate. And so like it, it kind of felt like a, a little bit of like a, a full circle moment where like I was like, nice. Now it's a full band and I'm still catfishing our way onto shows. Uh <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I, I think we had practiced together like less than five or six times. And then we played that show in February of 22. And then we got a, I got an email from the guy that books, um, he books all the live nation venues up in Denver. Okay. And he's like, hey, do you guys want to play the marquee with, with this band May? And I love the marquee. It's like my favorite venue. And, um, and, you know, we're all kind of like, whoa, like people are asking us to play the marquee like and we're like man like we've geez like people must be like ear to the ground like you know like a lot of buzz <laughs> happening around around the band and we're really kind of truly blown away because only thing a band's going on right now is like uh an acoustic ep and a music video that i i had made in my garage with some friends <laughs> and, uh, and an instagram page with like a hundred followers but you know sure. we're like okay and so like the the really funny thing was I didn't, I'd never heard of May before. And like all of, all of these dudes, all my friends, like, they're like, dude, you're playing with May. I'm like, yeah, I guess like, <laughs> it's cool. It's going to be at the marquee. They've got pizza. Like, yeah, dude. They got and pizza. They got pizza. <laughs> That's the <laughs> best part. <laughs> uh, but you know, th then we ended up, we, we played that show. And um, I, I think I, I, I pretty quickly found out that like, there wasn't a buzz around the band, you know, he, uh, the the town buyer for the venue had asked a friend of mine's band and they couldn't take it and he was like oh i think duncan's in a band like uh hit him up see if they'll take it <laughs> <laughs> but that was a really it was a really cool show um and those dudes were really nice they were cool to chill with like i've definitely noticed this thing where like the bands that are a little bit older they're all about hanging and like mm -hmm. just you know connecting and like Whereas, like, sometimes with some of the younger bands that are, you know, they're, like, um, kind of big bands, like, they're not as interested in, like, making connections with people. So, um, well, yeah. the older The older bands have already done it. They've been yeah. there, and they just want to, like, relax before they got to go play. Yeah. And then they want to go relax after they're done playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So, like, that was a really cool show, man. Um, and, I mean, May was super dope live. Like... I, I still feel bad. Like, I, I feel like I need to listen to them more. Cause like, it's definitely like, uh, I feel like there's a lot of bands that are a time and place kind of thing, you know, like where like, if you get into a band, like as part of their, you know, 
their moment um yeah during a certain record like you will forever like be a fan of that band but like then as time passes like a lot of times like you don't even know until you find those records and you're like whoa like how did i never hear of this band before that's to to me that with may that's the everglow that that album is just like front to back just chef's kiss chef's i'm gonna be honest i never heard of the may until i read that question well i guess you both got homework to do yeah yeah i, got I don't i got the date <laughs> off apparently <laughs> <laughs> no yeah so i mean that was a cool that was a cool memory um i mean god we've just done so much cool shit in this band like there's and you know we have all these inside jokes you know like one of uh one of my favorite memories is on, on our first tour you know like i mean we had started the band and and at the time in my life that we had started the band you know it was it was post covid post uh 2020 and during COVID, I mean, I got my shit together, right? Like I'm, I'm 29 now and I've always like worked in bars and plays played in bands. And so it's like the pandemic happens and it's like, yo, like no more bands, no more bars. And I'm like, I'm truly just like, what? Like, that's, what do that's, I do with my life that now? <laughs> all I do, you know, like, who am I, I? Yeah. Who am I? Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, I, I, uh, I got in a relationship. I uh, tried to become a realtor. Well, I was a realtor for like two years. And, um, you know, and it was, it was funny, like a friend of mine, he was, he was telling me, he's like, yeah, dude, during COVID, like we're all looking at you. We're like, damn, like Duncan's getting his shit together. Like he's really like on the up and up and up. And then something happens here in like early 2022, you know, you start a band and then buy a van and it's just like you know, like yeah i, I think you that, start growing your hair out long like yeah, a freaking hippie yeah i think that <laughs> i think i bought a van before our first show like i was just like i was just like no like like we're gonna do i'm doing it. this yeah and like we had not like really talked about going on tour or anything but uh i'm all like i'm getting a van like i think i just showed up to practice one day um and i'm like hey guys check this out 2001 only 180,000 miles <laughs> and so <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe the deal i got on this butte <laughs> can't believe the deal i got on it it didn't even have catalytic converters you know <laughs> and, and so like we, i get that first van you know not knowing anything about vans i mean i did like a lot of research but it's was, it was an old van and uh we get in it to go on our first tour and we uh we we're going out west to california and we get out of Eisenhower Tunnel on I-70, which is kind of like where, where you're not inclining anymore. Like now you're on the decline. And so we go to press on the brakes and the whole van just starts shaking. I mean, like <laughs> uncontrollably <laughs> shaking. And so we drove a thousand miles like that. It's like Sunday or something. Like we And there's nothing on I-70 uh, between Denver and really like, vegas there's no yeah there's there isn't much yeah so like we can't get work done on the van anywhere so like we drive this van all the way to san diego where um our now bassist colin you know we had picked him up um shortly after we started the band like we picked up colin and he plays bass now and i just sing but he's from san diego so he's like well you know like i've got a friend that's a mechanic you know like we can take it to him so we get to san diego you know safe and sound thank god and Colin hits up his friend. And so like, you know, we have an off day and we're taking the van up to his friend and we get to this shop and his friend's just like, yeah, yeah, don't pull through the front, like, like park around back. We show up at like, this is the premier exotic car, like motorsport mechanic. <laughs> I think it was an Encinitas or Escondido. Like you, you got it. You got to park this, this shithole around back. We, we can't have people seeing this. <laughs> Yeah, and so like, and it was hilarious, dude. Like, like we get the van there, and they won't let us pull it in, probably because they think we're gonna hit something. And like, I'm like, yeah, that's fair. And it's like, it's fair. Like, in the garage, like next to like a Lamborghini, like it's next to like a GTR. And like, I'm just looking at it. I'm so proud. I'm like, that's uh, that's my 2001 Ford Econoline. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, like we got the van fixed and everything. And I mean, since then, it's been. It's been great. We actually, we got a different van now, but, um, that was, there's nothing that bonds you like, uh, 
barreling down the highway, like in an old van that you're just not sure is going to make it, you know, any second, like a, you're just like, what's going to happen. Is the wheel going to pop off? Yeah. I don't know. So like after that, like that, I, I feel like there's so much more trust in, in everyone. Like <laughs> if we're like, okay guys. We, oh yeah. Once, yeah. once you're like touring through the mountains in blizzards and storms, like that shit really brings you together. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we try not to tour in the winter um, because like, I mean, I'm from Denver, man. Like, Every year, every year, it's around this time time of year, you hear about a band uh, that's usually going through Utah or Wyoming that they flip their trailer or, you know, van spins out, they're in a ditch or whatever. And it's like, (laughs) have you guys ever driven um, on the West, like between like Utah and Colorado? Yeah. I can't say I have. Oh, it's so scary. Like, it's literally, it's like, first of all, in Utah, the speed limit's 80. Yeah, that, I know. That's sketchy. But like there's nothing. There's no cities. Like I think the biggest city is like St. George or something with a population of like 30,000 and that's on the border of like Utah and Nevada almost or Utah and Arizona or whatever. So it's like yeah, you got like it's like 600 miles of just like desolation. It's it's tough because you got to think of like <clears throat> when it comes to touring especially um all of the big bands tour and there's, you know, huge shows and festivals like all through summer and spring, all through the nice time. So the prime time for smaller bands to tour is winter because yeah. no one else is really doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, it's, it's uh, season. Yeah. So it's like, you get, it's like, is it worth the risk? I guess it depends on where you live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's just like it, it truly is a gamble i mean even like like we've got a run starting in next month mid next month and like that's still gambling like it's like if it snows like you can really quickly go from oh yeah like these roads are fine to like we might die here like <laughs> you know like <laughs> this this is it this was it yeah, it was it. it was fun gentlemen yeah so that's why we always travel with like you know we, we've got like a little bit of costco snacks in the van in case you know we get we got to camp out for like two days or something Absolutely. i'm sorry my cat be going crazy over here oh, I love it's it, like man. as oh. soon as he sees all the lights on he's like oh it's time for my shot it's my time to shine my shine time my shine time <laughs> <laughs> so um I'm pretty sure you're you're our first guest from Denver. Can you tell us what the scene's like over there? Uh yeah, I mean like Denver's Denver's a weird city cuz like it's my observation that like Denver is a huge music city for live music. Like anything else, any other kind of like music industry like support other than a live music doesn't exist here. Like you've got some, you've got some really good uh, engineers out here, you know, like you can make records, but like in terms of management, um, booking agents, like all that kind of like LA stuff, like you don't really have that in Denver. So it's, it's mostly uh, dudes doing freelance work that are, you know, managers and agents or videographers or, um, you know, recording engineers and everything. And that really fosters in this DIY spirit. Like, everyone i know from denver like you you hardly ever hear of dudes being like oh we went and recorded with uh you know insert big name producer here um which you know it's, it's common in california like a lot of bands we know in california like you know they go down to la to record or like whatever well yeah i mean california is one of the meccas you know yeah yeah and so like out here like th- since there has historically never been any music like recorded music industry out here it's mainly just been like live music um there's a huge diy spirit because no one was there to do the stuff that anyone needed done so like most of the dudes that record bands like they just came up recording bands because their band needed recorded like when they were like a teenager you know in their 20s they're like well we were making a record and like no one was gonna record it so i bought some microphones and like did it myself now i do this like full time or like you know i mean it's it's really cool um to see that like i've got a friend that he just started a record label and like 
same thing. You know, he's like, he's in a couple bands and like, he's like, Oh, we need someone to put out our music. Well, no one's going to do it. <laughs> Might as well do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and, and I mean, you know, that's, that's my band too. Like we, we were like, well, like, guess we'll do like, we'll make the record ourselves. Like we did drums with a, a good friend of mine. Um, but like the rest of it, it's like, it's been completely DIY. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's been my experience too. You know, like, like, I, I guess I managed the band and like, I didn't even know what that meant. Right. Like, I just remember like there was one day that I sat down to book some shows and I was like, Oh, I got to sit down and do some work for the band. And then that day just like never ended. It's like, ever since then, like every day there's like something, but it's like, I didn't know how to do that, but I was like, no one else is going to do it. Like, yeah, I mean, somebody's got to take that yeah. role though, you know, like so someone's got to do it. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. And so like, I think Denver really encompasses that, um, that kind of spirit where like just everyone is putting on festivals themselves, you know, uh, starting record labels, recording music, uh, making music videos, like, and it's really cool. There's like a huge amount of talent in this city. It's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've played in Denver a few times. It's like, it's a, it's a great, it's a great city. It's fun, fun place to go and play and just uh, get lost in. Yeah, where have you played out here? I honestly do not remember. I am that that is not my forte. Uh <laughs> it has been probably over 15 years since I've played a show there. Um I came through two years in a row with the warp tour, but um that's probably the last time I've been there. Dude, that's well. In Warp Tour in Denver was at a Mile High Stadium or in Vesco, yeah. and like growing up as a kid, I didn't know football was there. I just knew that okay. the <laughs> was in the parking lot. You know, it's it's the Bronco Stadium. Like, yeah. I, I just show up. You know, I'm like 13. I'm like, man, like, why can't we go in? Like, why is why can't we go in the big like stadium thing? I'm like, well, like, I don't know. This is where Warp Tour is. And then like as an adult, like somehow the dots got connected. Like someone's telling me that they're like, you want to go to the Broncos game? I'm like, yeah, where's it at? And they're like, you mean oh. like where the parking lot where Warp yeah. Tour was? Yeah, and they're like, <laughs> oh, it's at it's at uh, you know Mile High Field or I think now it's called Sports Authority Field or yeah. I don't know. But like, I'm 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 an adult. Like I got to be like 20 or something. And I'm like, oh, there was football going on in the stadium like i'm not that's not the warp tour venue okay <laughs> yep <laughs> yeah that was a that was a cool place we got to we got to go in there and just like wander around that was pretty fun yeah that sounds like fun i i definitely have like i bike around it sometimes uh, like you know on, on like the weekends like you can just go ride around the stadium and it's i mean i have like the rose colored glasses on like every time I, I just get past the lap that's like next to the parking lot. I'm like, man, like people don't know what happened in that parking lot. No, there definitely My... wasn't any, but there was, there was nothing crazy happening in that lot during football games. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> My experience so we... with Denver, um, I was like, basically whenever I go on tour with any friends, I just declare myself tour manager and um <laughs> one time like we had a show like cancel like the night before for some reason i just kind of started messaging people and someone's like oh yeah no uh there's a show going on i think it was at a place called seventh circle yeah seventh circle it's i used to run sound there when i was when i was younger that's a cool spot yeah that was a really really cool place that's like as diy as it gets it looks like yep well, I don't, I, I don't know that place. I don't remember. <laughs> it, it's like it, it's a legendary. I'm, like I'm the worst with remembering. Like the the rest of the dudes in my old band, like Gibby would know. Like Joe, that dude, like he can't remember to fucking like wear like any of his like clothing is like it just or the <laughs> his bare necessities of the day. Couldn't fucking remember, but he could tell you whose floor we slept on in like 2008 yeah. uh, in <laughs> in like DePaul, Illinois. Yep. Or you know, like, 
Dude can remember all that stuff. I can hardly remember names. Wait, what, uh, what band did you used to be in? Uh, I was in a band called Jamestown Story and Cities Never Sleep. Cities Never Sleep. That sounds so familiar. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna look you up and I'll be like, it, there, there's there was multiples um that sounded the same. Um, I made like I started Cities Never Sleep and then another band popped up afterwards called City Never Sleeps. Is that it? But the, and they they got more popular than we did. And then there's another band from Texas called As the City Sleeps. Oh no, yeah. So. Dude, there's, there's only so many names. And like this is something that like I didn't think about it. Like when <clears throat> there's so there's a relate single that's out there that um no one knows about because it's not on like our Spotify page. It was like it was a song I recorded in <clears throat> in my garage in Tempe, Arizona. And uh I didn't know how to publish music. Like I just I think I pulled up TuneCore and like I'm like, yeah, like, there's a song name, like, and uh, relate. And then I send it. And, like, a couple weeks later, I get this email from um, from this band called Relate. And, like, they're all like, hey, like, your song uploaded to our our page. You need to contact, like, your distributor and, like, figure it out. And, like, in hindsight, like, like I didn't know what anything was. I think I just emailed them back. And I'm like, I don't know what a distributor is. Like, I... <laughs> just really <laughs> aggressively like well, wait hey, i don't know what this is why don't you fuck yourself right no I'm just like I, I don't think that wasn't like my like that wasn't my prerogative but i was definitely just like no no i know i'm just being dumb. like i'm like i don't know what any of this is like because in my head i'm like who cares like no one's gonna listen to my song like but none of this matters and uh but then like when when i went to do the next the next time i published music i was like hmm uh let's just add a period and so <laughs> it's like problem solved add a period but like now we have this issue where uh you know like bands in town like ties into your tour dates and everything and so yeah. like we'll routinely get added to shows as the wrong relate and there's like three or four of them and so it's mm -hmm. like now it's like a headache because i always have to like when i'm emailing uh you know like any booking agents or like talent buyers whatever i'm just like yo like this is the link to our bands in town. Like, please make sure to do the right one. Cause there's, and then there's like, there's related period. Right. You know, I'm just like, dude, like you can't win. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's, it, there's an insane amount of bands nowadays. You know, this isn't like the seventies and eighties and nineties where, you know, it, it was much more difficult to just start a band and be established where anybody with a phone can record a song and upload it. You know, yeah. it's, I mean, there's, it, there's, th I mean, just unsigned pop punk as like, just, just us, we have had like, had like over 3000 bands on like on our playlist, separate bands, 3000 separate bands. That's wild. <laughs> it's there and that's that's just this like diy unsigned pop punk like scene you know punk emo scream scream anything under the scene yeah. like that's that's a lot of fucking bands <laughs> yeah and pat has well, listened to every single one of them every single one of them well i firmly believe in the diy ethos uh but yeah. like at the same time it's like it's it's made the pool so much bigger of just yeah. like what is out there You're like I, I can't even tell you how many times i'll i'll run into someone or like a friend of a friend will be like hey man like you know like you look familiar like i uh, i saw your band play like my my buddy is you know this dude that you're friends with and he took me to the show and he's like yo my friend's in a band and like you know you guys are pretty good like you know it's it's always like really a a mixed bag when someone says my friend is in a band you're always a little bit worried you're like uh right oh yeah yeah hey, you never know what you're getting into yeah <laughs> but, but it's it's cool that anyone can create like yeah whatever like whenever it's it's just you know it's harder to to stand out um in that but it's the world we live in now 
yeah and i mean that's kind of the whole that was the whole point of unsigned pop punk is uh you know having giving every everyone that wants to have a voice the opportunity to be heard whether you know i can't control where you where you go where your band goes where you take it but i'm here to listen we're here to help however we can and and listen you know that's one thing we can do and so that's what we're here for (laughs) well i almost feel like this is the golden age of music like undoubtedly i mean it kind of sucks that you it's a lot harder to make a living doing it but i also feel like that uh you know kind of removing the large financial incentive from making music has caused for a lot of you know diy underground bedroom artists to really make just pure expression and put that out for no other reason than they felt like they needed to express themselves well i would say that this is also the probably really the only time in history in the music industry that diy artists can make a living doing music like you couldn't you couldn't do that before like you you could like but there are not many and now there's like i mean look at how many look at how many people that are not i wouldn't say rich but making a living doing shit like streaming being a tiktok content creator a youtube content creator you have hundreds and thousands and thousands of famous people that you've never fucking heard of but are famous but you'll yeah. still never hear of a third of them it's wild it's a it's a wild time and it's it's it is really cool because it it gives everybody the opportunity to now create yep and to have a chance at being creative for a living which is most people's dreams but before most almost all of those people just ended up working in an office somewhere yeah being depressed yeah it's crazy i mean it's such a it's such a mixed emotion for me because it's definitely the you know your trajectory is in your hands the the tools to do this fucking everywhere online for free like any info any knowledge you need to know want to know any question you have and, you and, know, and not only that, but like you can get mo- like decent enough equipment. For, like I bought this microphone for 15 bucks. You know, like it's, it's fine. It sounds fine. Like I'm no Gibby. I'm not beautiful. I don't have <laughs> luscious long fucking hair in a fucking boom standy mic right now. But that's in my garage. But, you know, with the fancy lighting, that's in my kid's room. I don't have that shit. But you don't have to have all that stuff and if you want that stuff let's like to 20 bucks it's right it's not crazy you can get the things to make yourself to make yourself look good oh totally yeah dude and then and then once you you start somewhere you start with a 15 dollar mic then if your stuff is good you'll make money then you can buy a new mic then you can buy a gibby mic (laughs) Dude, yeah, I mean, well, and it's crazy. I mean, I I do audio engineering too, and like getting into that, you know, it's it's so intimidating because you feel like you have to have all this expensive stuff, and like, yeah. you know, I've gone down the path of needing the expensive stuff, and then you kind of realize you're like, actually, like, sure, SM fifty sevens, they just sound good. They're seventy dollar mics or whatever. Like, you know, it's it's crazy. Yeah, and and you do need expensive stuff, but you don't need expensive stuff also right out the gate. That's the thing. You yeah, don't you need probably. like you can get good competent quality stuff to to start and then you grow and your equipment can grow as you grow. That that's just me, I guess. I don't know. No, you have the DIY uh, ethos, man. I love it. <laughs> All right, we got one more question before we go to a quick break. If you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now that you wish you knew when you were first starting your journey, what would that be? Um, 
Oh, geez. If, if I could give a piece of advice, I think it would really be, um, don't be afraid of the music theory. Like I, I'm a self-taught musician and I, uh, I didn't actually learn any theory until like a year ago. And, uh, I, I remember learning the circle of fifths and understanding how chord progression worked. And, uh, suddenly it was kind of like the wool was pulled back from my eyes and it's a very simple concept. You know, you don't have to go too in depth with it, but like, you know, and even to expand on that idea, don't be afraid of understanding the mechanics of your craft. It'll save you time and uh brain ache if you can, you know, if you can understand all that stuff. Um, and you, you run into that a lot in every, I think every creative endeavor where like, I'm not a proponent of, you know, get a master's degree in uh, music theory or, or jazz music or whatever, unless you want to do that. But yeah. um, I am a proponent of go on YouTube for a couple hours and figure out how some of this stuff works. It'll make your life a lot easier as long as you don't get too far down the rabbit hole. Yeah. I mean, always, always be learning. Yeah. Always be learning. It's a, it, you know, it's, I like realistically though, I mean, never, never stop learning. You know, you can always, um, you know, expand on your craft. You can always do better. You're never, you're never your best. You can always work to be better. That's how you become great. Really? I mean, that's, a, I mean, Eddie Van Halen, what arguably one of the greatest guitar players of all time, you know, you, you got to keep practicing. You got to keep learning, keep growing. Yep. Well, and that, and I guess, you know, I, you asked for one, but I got two. seek out situations where you're not the best in the room and whatever it is, seek out, actively seek out situations and people to surround yourself with where you are the most inexperienced in a room. You are the, the person with the most to learn. And I, I found that that, that I found that people in general are very excited and willing to lend their time and expertise to teach you and support you totally. uh, almost universally. Like, I feel like it's a human thing. Like we want to teach. And so like, I've very seldom, if ever been in a situation where I've been the most inexperienced in a room and that's not been met with, um, you know, guidance and, and gleeful guidance, right. You know, from mm -hmm. folks that are so much more advanced or better than me at whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, I just, just don't, don't be shy or, uh, feel shameful for being that most inexperienced person in the room in whatever endeavor it is. Right. But, you know, music or engineering, you know, uh, video insert X, Y, Z. Yeah. I, I can't agree more. I'll even like throw in like what the conversation we had before the question is, was like, you don't need to start off with the most expensive year to like get started on whatever you want to do. That's also yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, I mean, now, I mean, I could, I've, I could probably do better if I wanted to, but I'm, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of just, I fucking record demos. I like recording stuff. I just do it on my phone. I don't like oh. anybody can do like, it doesn't matter. You start somewhere. If you want to start, if you have an iPhone, because I think because you need an iPhone in order to use GarageBand and that's all my brain can handle learning um, <laughs> for re recording engineering. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like it's, you know, for stuff like that, do you want, if you want to do it, learn how to like try learn how to do it i started trying to work on like my cars lately and i just look up shit on google not uh -huh. uh, google and then youtube and uh i mean we'll get you started well yeah and and, and our band was I, I think i for a couple months after we put out chemical condition our our first kind of you know full band ep um a real big point of pride for for me and for our drummer Diego was uh 
know, people were telling us, they're like, oh my God, this sounds massive. This sounds great. I, I remember someone reached out to us and they said, you know, like, did you record this at the Blasting Room, which is you know, a famous studio in Fort Collins. That's like where a data mm-hmm. record recorded, like Rise Against. Yeah. And we were so proud that with the exception of drums, we recorded the rest of it on a Focusrite Scarlet, you know, like yeah. on a two by two, like, like, and that's so cool to me still. You know, you get those for a hundred bucks a guitar center. Yeah, you, you've got two i two. No, I got the uh, pre Sonus. Oh, okay. It's a, it's still the same thing though. It's just a two yeah. little plug in interface. Yeah, it does, I work it on matter. demos on it. It's so That's nice. Thing, dude. It doesn't matter. Like, use use the thing you have. You know, like there's uh there's this producer I really like. Um, who's you know, he'll give microphone suggestions and the suggestion that he's given when it's come up. You know, what's the best microphone? Is he's like. I don't know, dude. The best microphone is one that you can afford and like yeah. that you can use. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. And I mean, if, if, on that note, an SM57. I mean, it's pretty universal. Can make a make a lot of shit sound real good. Yep. So, with that and all of that knowledge and advice, we're gonna go on a quick break, and we'll be right back with our next segment. Here with Unsigned Pop Punk. We're a community dedicated to building up the music scene by shining a spotlight on up and coming bands. Now, I know what you must be thinking. These guys must be raking in the cash. Wrong. But you can help us help others by picking up some merch. We found what big business is selling shirts for, and we slashed the prices. We saw what people are charging for sweatshirts, and we will they'll kick those prices in the face. So pick up some merch from us today. You won't be mad you did. And we're back. Thanks so much for sticking around. We're hopping into our next segment, the food for thought segment. Everyone loves food, so we're just gonna chat about food. So it's good. It's good stuff. While Pat was googling <laughs> Colorado foods, oh, no. I just want to emphasize this is Pat. This is Pat. Sure right was. Here. The first thing that comes up is your world famous Rocky Mountain oysters. Uh-huh. And for those of you that don't know, Rocky Mountain oysters are bull, bison, and calf testicles. Well, let's, so let's discuss, let's discuss this. this. What is what is so, this? So, <laughs> so let's discuss. Like, uh, have you have you ever tried them? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know it. It depends how they're prepared, man. But like, it's I've had them fried. They just taste yeah. like a chewy chicken tender. It's chewy chicken tender. Yeah, the one time I had them though, like I'll never forget. Uh, I was with a buddy, and I ordered them, and and you know I know what Rocky Mountain oysters are, and so like you know I get like you I got them as like an appetizer in like a, a very small town. Um, somewhere in like western colorado and like okay they come to the table and like i'm like yeah man like these are pretty good and i like chew one and i'm like you know i'm i'm not that like uh like nothing really like hurts my stomach like i'm like okay sure. and so, you know i'm like it's pretty good and he's like oh, okay i'll try one so he like puts his mouth he starts chewing and he's like this is really chewy and he's like what'd you say this is and i'm like it's cow balls <laughs> and i'll never forget he, his face like turns green he gets up goes to the bathroom and like does his thing and uh he wouldn't touch him after that (laughs) i i just it's it's an interesting thought to me so like obviously like i i don't know about you gibby but i I mean i have heard of rocky mountain oysters before this um it's just such a like okay so we've got a, a very large country right um Nobody else seems to be doing this shit. Uh, why you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, in all honesty, I think that it has to do with uh, some of the history in Colorado. Is right. Like, yeah, it's from ranch. farmers and ranchers and shit like that. Yeah, and you know, if you go up in <clears throat> into any of the land in Colorado, like uh, in the summer, dude, like there's herds of cattle just like roaming, like ranchers. Right. Like, you get like a permit or you rent like a segment of BLM land and like you just you graze your cattle there. Um 
so like i could imagine that like it's just kind of it was kind of like a every part of the buffalo sort of thing right you know where yeah totally eventually someone noticed they're like hey man so like we got all these cow balls <laughs> why are let's, we eating let's those? let's fuck with this dude what can we dude. what can we do let's not be wasteful yeah i will i will say though like it's uh it's not a normal thing like you don't go in restaurants here <laughs> and see that on the menu um it's it's very niche though okay. there was i don't remember what brewery this was there was a brewery that made a rocky mountain oyster beer a couple years ago uh that's kind of weird. I didn't try it, but uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, it doesn't sound appetizing um, or enjoyable. So, are there other ways? So, the only way I've ever heard or seen is you know frying them. It, um, it, are there other ways to prepare them that people do? I mean, I'm sure you can just you know you. It's a, just go for it, you know, just throw it on a fryer and just, you know. I'd imagine that they're prepared in a skillet, you know, like some ranchers, like, you know, like prepare them in a skillet. Like, I don't, sure. know, I don't know where you buy them, honestly. Like, like you, you'd have to know a rancher to, to get your hands on it. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Like, first off, it's funny. Second off, kind of interested. You know, what's the history? Yeah. Tell me some history. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So now, like, this was continuing up. to <laughs> continuing to to you know Google more. So as we all know, nothing pairs more perfectly with pop punk than pizzas, and and I was also unawares of this before. But there's apparently a Colorado style pizza. Yeah. Uh, so so what exactly is the Colorado style? Um, it's green chilies on a pizza. Least, is it? Okay. As far as I'm aware, yeah. And and it's funny that, like, you know, a green chili is a New Mexico thing, right? Sure. Like, well, there's kind of like a, there's a rivalry, right, about uh, does New Mexico or does Colorado do green chili, like, better or the right way? So it's like a, a, we're friends with this band in New Mexico, this really cool band called Savings. And every time. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and so, like, when they were coming to Colorado last year, you know, I was, I just kept telling them, I'm like, don't worry, guys, like, oh, we'll show you real green chili. Like, it's okay. <laughs> like, don't be nervous. And it's like, you know, the green chili I have at my house, like, it says, you know, it's 505 brand, like Santa Fe, New Mexico, like, where it's, <laughs> but we have an ego up here about like the way we do green chili being the right way. Okay. Like, so, okay. What, I get what did what do you mean by green chili? Well, like a like a green chili pepper, right? Like I think it's called like a. Is it like a sauce or something? Well, it's it's like the actual or like a or like a just a pepper. It's the actual pepper, right? Okay. So okay, so well, you're in the you're in the Midwest, so uh, right. I guess so. Like, what is chili to you? Well, like. Like this, like this chili, like like the like the hearty, meaty, beany, like soup stew yeah. dish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's so like that, so that's red chili, and okay. even then, I'm like kind of kind of stretching it. But like what you guys call chili out there, like skyline, right? You know, like skyline oh, chili. Yeah, I mean Skyline is over in Ohio. They do their yeah. own thing. Okay. Well, like that's not chili out here. So like out here, like if you're gonna make a so you're gonna make green chili stew, you like uh, I can't give away the whole recipe because you know it's it's a close guarded family secret. Uh, okay. But, <laughs> but like basically, you like you know you take like a pork shoulder and you uh, you cook it in a like a cast iron pot and then you add in tomatoes and um you know and water and like you boil it like onion garlic and you boil it to make like the base for like eight hours and then you add okay. in the green chilies which are it's a roasted uh i think it's called an anaheim pepper technically oh yeah sure yeah okay and so you add that in and then um you know that's 
that's really like the Colorado style green chili. Um, it's, it's more of like a soup. Like it doesn't have a stewy consistency to it. Uh, it's not very, okay. thick. but like a lot of other places, you know, like they'll, they'll prepare it as like a roux, uh, for the base so that, you know, it's got that thick chili consistency. Um, that's not the right way to do it, but New Mexico keeps trying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yes. We we uh, up here in the Midwest we do our 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 red chili, and it's like, but it's also different. Like different different places still do it differently. Like some places, uh, like chili doesn't have meat; it's just beans. Or some places, chili doesn't have beans; it's just meat. And it's like like from what I remember, uh. In for hi historically, chili was just something that like the like cowboys and shit made out of whatever the fuck they had with them. They just threw it together, and that was chili. And typically, it was like more beans and stuff because they just they didn't have meat. They had fucking beans and shit. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, I, I've never heard that before. It makes sense though. And then that would make sense with like regional variations, you know? So it's like, right. Cause I think that like the green chili is native to like geographically, what is like Northern New Mexico and Southern sure. Colorado. And, and you know, like an up, like where I live in Denver, like, I mean, we're in the middle of the state. Like th this is actually geographically very different than, uh, than the Southern part of the state. Um, it's higher elevation, you know, we're in the mountains, like, so like we don't really have it up here as much. Like I, I wouldn't say it's as much like a Denver thing as it's a Southern Colorado thing. But sure. uh, so Cowboys roaming through Southern Colorado, I could definitely see them being like, "Oh man, like all we got is like like we have we have the, some chilies and like some tomatoes." <laughs> like, let's, let's try to make <laughs> put that sh put that shit together, man. Put that shit together, man. Yep. And cor like Gibby. Or correct me, anybody in comments, wherever, if I'm wrong, but isn't Skyline Chili though? Because I know that's the Ohio's, like what they call theirs. But isn't that like the fucking like chili with spaghetti? I think you're kind of I, on. I think you're right. I could be wrong, and I don't want to comment on that because my partner loves Skyline, and I don't want to be wrong because she I'm will looking. find out. Skyline chili. Yeah, uh, I googled Skyline chi chili spaghetti. Yeah, it's a okay. Thing. So it's the chili spaghetti. Yeah, like no, that's wrong. I mean, I think we can all collectively say that's wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Honestly, I'd fuck with that because I like chili mac. Well, Ever but done I, chili mac? Ooh. So here's here's what I'm gonna here's here's my thought. The ethos of chili is whatever you have, you just yeah. kind of fit in, right? So, I mean... Fucking go for it. Anything can be chili, right? Like Cheerios chili, you know? That could be... <laughs> Mix in different yeah. cereals, call it chili. Yeah, man, You just, as, long, as long as you've got, like, some spicy, whatever you throw in, it's chili. It's gumbo. They call it gumbo in New Orleans, man. Like, yeah. There you go. That's fair. I'm having so many realizations about soup based foods right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be wrong about fucking everything I've said today. And if I am, please correct me in the comments. Let me know. But I'm moderately sure about things I've said today. <laughs> you know, I think that's the best that any of us can say on any day. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got one more question. One more, yeah. So, just imagine this. Me and Pat, we're in a band. We're doing un the unsigned pop punk band, right? Okay. Imagine it. And we're go coming through the Denver area. Where is one place that you feel that not just us, but anyone going through the Denver area needs to stop and eat at? Like, your personal, like, this is the fucking place. You gotta go. Uh, Illegal Pete's. Yeah. Okay. What do so, we got? Illegal Pete's is 
it's like Chipotle, right? Okay. Except it's like independently owned. And I, uh, I believe they were started before Chipotle, but sure. it's like similar concept. Well, same concept, you know, like the fi- kind of fast casual thing where you go up to the counter and you order like subway style. And that's just the fucking, it's so good. They have a bar in there and, um, they like, you know, they do burritos, burrito bowls. They, uh, and they have more stuff than Chipotle does. Like they sure. have like, you can get like a, a beer battered fish bowl. This is my personal okay. favorite. And, um, that's just that's the spot. And back in the day, they used to do shows there. Like they would have like punk rock shows there. Um, nice. Wow. Yeah, and I, I used to work for them too. I didn't actually work for them in Denver. I worked for them in Tempe, Arizona. But like, they're a cool company, man. Like, I uh, wholeheartedly believe that like if you're if you're gonna be in Colorado or Arizona, and you want like a fast casual burrito thing, it's illegal pizza. Um, All right, my my question because I like. Now, people listening, I like Chipotle, okay? I do. I like Chipotle. It's it's a delicious, tasty treat. But here's my question, and this will, this will solidify it. Okay, Legal Pete's, right? They got, is there, do they have queso? Oh, yeah. Okay. Is their queso shitty or good? Oh, it's really good. All right, it's better than Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Chipotle is good, but their queso is trash, and yeah. you know it. Oh it's yeah, fucking bad. Yeah, no, I like, uh, like this. This place. Is, <laughs> if you're rolling through, you need to you need to stop there. And if you're like in a touring band, if you like email them, they'll feed you for free. Oh, that's oh, fucking cool. That is Chipotle sick. used to kind of do something like that for bands. Like at one point in time, like if you were in a band and you got like a Chipotle tattoo then you'd get free chipotle for life dude no so how many chipotle tattoos do you have <laughs> uh none because i was going to get one and then they stopped doing it <laughs> damn i know i I, I, I wanted a fucking burrito just a big ass fucking thick boy burrito on me i would have gotten it i don't care well have you ever had a quesarito i haven't I've but the, i've heard they're delicious i've had the dude, taco bell I, one yeah, I've had the Taco Bell one. Oh, uh, yeah, no, that doesn't count. It's the Chipotle one. Like, that big old quesadilla just as the tortilla for your burrito. Yeah. That's, like, I think once I discovered that, like, there was a, there was a marked decline in my physical health. <laughs> <laughs> no I one should that. I I'm going to have to try it at some point. Absolutely. I also know that it like something else went viral on TikTok with I think it was the quesarito and then also some sort of like sauce. Oh like, man, it's dogs. Hey, I don't Jim, remember hey. what the sauce was, but I remember it went viral, super viral. Like the the hot ones challenge kind of thing, or is it is a different no? Sauce? I it was just what some sort of like sauce that Chipotle had that you had to ask for. And it was just like it was like it was a really big deal, like the, getting the entire thing completed because Chipotle just didn't like doing it because it became Ooh, so yeah. popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I remember what you're talking about. I don't remember exactly what it is, but like I remember all this Chipotle stuff going viral because like yeah, you could get like they had an item on your menu where like if you only ordered three things, it was like two dollars or something, and so like you could get like a $2 bean and chicken burrito or something like, and people started gaming the system, like as you should, like, I think Chipotle is owned by McDonald's. So I don't feel bad for them, but I'm like, but they like, they uh, compared to a lot of places. They're not expensive. No, they're not like they're cheaper in fucking McDonald's. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I've heard, I've heard of dudes getting like catering orders from Chipotle and then like meal prepping with that. Cause it's cheaper to do that instead of like go to the grocery you can't probably could be depending on what you're doing yeah hmm. i know what i'm doing tonight <laughs> <laughs> all right we're done with the food for thought qu- uh, segment now it's time for the the last the great rapid fire question segment friendships will be tested rapid fire questions 
you're just going to speak from the heart. You're going to shoot from the hip. Just fo just follow your heart, and it, it won't lead you wrong. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Monster Energy or Rockstar? Rockstar. Pop Punk or Emo? Emo. Taylor Swift or John Mayer? Taylor Swift. Skinny jeans or baggy pants? Uh, uh, skinny jeans when I was younger, baggy pants now. They're just more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Disney Plus or Netflix? Disney Plus. Stuffed crust or deep dish pizza? Stuffed crust. Vans or Converse? Vans. You don't even need to finish that. <laughs> <laughs> Gibby's <laughs> laughing because I fucking looked straight at him like he fucking knew called me an old man last time <laughs> well because our like our last our last guest we did they were they were on the younger side like yeah like I think they were like born in the 2000s they said yeah um, and I have it written down that says Vans or Chuck Taylors because they're also called Chuck Taylors yep. yeah had no idea what that was. And Gibby's just dying. And he's like, the Converse. I'm like, I forget that they're fucking called Converse. I'm sorry. I it, I think it should be illegal to like play in a pop punk, emo, DIY band and not wear Vans. It was the Vans <laughs> Warped Tour. Not the Doc Martens Warped Tour. Not the Converse <laughs> Warped Tour. The Vans Warped Tour. <clears throat> but Chuck Taylor's were iconic before Vans. Yeah, but like, did they do as much for the genre as Vans? I mean, when Gibby and me found out, they were the first, like, they were the first band to, uh, like, have like a fucking. They sponsored wasn't it a like band a sponsor? Yeah, I don't remember, yeah. but they s sponsored a band in like the nineties. They were the first shoes to do that. Apparently, Turnstile has worked with Converse in the past. Well, there you go. I would say Chucks and Vans, like they're they're both they, great. They're yeah. both beautiful, and that's okay. And now, also, I would love to like. I just if you're going all out with the Van stuff, I just want to point out you did pick Rockstar over Monster. <laughs> well, that's different, man. Monster just tastes like trash. Yeah, but Mon Monster was massive for Warp Tour. <laughs> Monster, Monster was Tour water. no water. <laughs> <laughs> they had the Monster Energy stage. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. No, yeah. it was drinking. I, you know, I think that that was one of the biggest. Like, like becoming an adult was really for me symbolized by like understanding my favorite bands weren't up there chugging like Monster Energy. No, they it was it was water in Monster cans. Which I, I do have fucking to admit. genius marketing. Yeah. Well, now they sell it in stores. I'm like, what? Yeah, but it's sold with like a completely different look. Like when it was yeah. when the band were drinking, it was just the black can with the monster. Like it looked like they were chugging down monster. Yeah, it is really smart. I will give you that. Still it was fucking genius. All right, we got one more. The All American Rejects or the Offspring? All American Rejects. Nice. See, all of these are good. Like the both questions, you know, both options are great in their own right. They're all good. It's okay to pick whichever way your heart desires. Patrick, do you wear Converse? <laughs> I have Converse and Vans. But I mostly wear my Crocs now. <laughs> That's but, uh, fair. I would say no. Realistically, um, I have Converse. I've I've got my Chucks. Fucking Converse. <laughs> Chucks. We've got you know classic Vans. I've got a pair of Doc Martens. I literally have like all of the fucking scene shoes, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's all I wear. <laughs> I I don't know why, uh, but I just wear Vans. Like and that's okay. Vans are okay. great. It's the same Vans are great. Thing. You know, like like it's one of those things that like became a habit but it's like i wear vans authentically black canvas vans authentic you know yeah and like, that's what like, i got i every 
year I buy another pair and like, I, I have a pair right now that like I've had them for a year and like, they've got holes in them. They don't even have laces right now. I think uh, it's really funny. Like we had this show where it was a Denver show um, last summer and we, we were driving from, I think Albuquerque the night before. And we get up to Denver. I realize I don't have a belt. So I take the laces out of my vans mm. and just, you know, use that as a belt. And then I took the vans off and like, I played the whole show barefoot. Um, and that like started to become a thing. Like it was like a, some sort of funny joke. Like there's all these TikToks and like, or like Instagrams of everything. It's like the dogs are out. <laughs> I'm just like, it wasn't on. <laughs> you, you gotta, uh, you gotta, if you want to go real old school, bring it back to like the early 2000s, some 41 era when, when Derek only wore like neckties for, for belts. You would. Oh. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought that was fucking tight and I did it for a very long time. Like I was like, I want to be cool like him. I'm going to do that. I Bring it back. It's one of those things where it's like, was that for fashion problem for him? It was like, I'm, I'm definitely like uh, someone though, that like I do stuff like that for practicality. It's not usually like for, for fashion, but now thinking on it, like being like, was the stuff that I thought was fashionable, like as a young fan of bands, like was that something that they did to be fashionable or was that something that they did out of like necessity, right? I would say probably was a necessity at one point and was like, now nah, I'm just going to fucking do this now. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's, now it's signature to, uh, to my look. Now it's cool. And I'm cool as shit, <laughs> but Duncan, you did it. You finished the podcast. Proud of you. Yeah. Now all that's all that's left. All you gotta do, let everybody know what you got going on, where they can find you, and what's next. Um. So my name is Duncan, and I sing in a band called Relate from Denver, Colorado, and we're going on tour. Uh, we're doing like a West Coast Southwest run starting uh, March thirteenth, and after that, we're uh, we're starting to look at some big things coming. For the summer. <laughs> right on. More like average things coming for the summer, but you can keep in touch with us on like uh, on Instagram or TikTok. All of our handles are at relate Denver, like no punctuation, just at relate Denver. And if you're uh, finding us on Spotify, just search relate with a period. Like and we'll, we'll be the first thing that pops up. We'll get you. You can also, for you watching, and listening, and you can uh, pop in the, description we'll have links so Hell you can yeah. also find them there you know we like to be helpful in that in that capacity appreciate it yeah we got you baby <laughs> <laughs> well hell yeah duncan thanks so much for hanging out with us today it was awesome it's a good Dude, time yeah. thank you for it's... having me like i had a great time you know i've done a couple podcasts and like i just like like it just it really feels like just hanging out with you guys like, yeah that's, cool. God, that's the goal yeah. that's the goal that's yeah. the goal it's like it's conversations, having good times. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's you know, so it's like I, I very much enjoy both of you. Like uh, Patrick, you said you're in Duluth. Yeah, Gibby, where do you live? Um, I'm down in Texas. Texas, what part? Um, down in College Station. Um, basically like two hours from Houston, three hours from Dallas, three hours from Austin. About oh, two hours from Austin, three hours middleish area. So okay. I'm like. I'm like in a good little space where like I could drive anywhere and still like it'll suck like the three hour drives, but you can drive anywhere and still party. Yeah. College station. You guys have a good scene down there. I just moved here in August and I haven't found it yet, but I'm still (laughs) looking. Maybe it's a maybe, but it's also like a big college town too. It's like where Texas A&M is. Oh, okay. 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 I think I've been there. Um, dude. Yeah. Like, we for some reason keep it's Texas. That is where overwhelmingly, like, if we can choose one place where people keep saying, "Come play Texas," like we want to see you. In, like at this, yeah, stage. but you can do an entire tour of just Texas. It I know you can hit like one routed seven, eight shows. We have the Texas Roadhouse tour ready to go, baby. I like, love that and, Roadhouse. And see, like, and I'm I'm so shameless, man. But like, I will one hundred percent announce a tour. Call it the Texas Roadhouse tour and say it's sponsored by Texas Roadhouse without talking to them. 
Let's That's be okay. Honest, you got that. See it half the time, anyways. <laughs> and on that Texas Roadhouse, if you're listening, they're coming for you. Okay, friends, <laughs> we will see <laughs> you all on Monday. Um, we're gonna let you go, and we're gonna have more private talk. See you later. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much for checking out the show. Please hit that like, subscribe, or follow button so you never miss an episode. And thank you so much to those of you who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or anywhere else you stream your podcasts. If you're in the position to help us grow and like behind-the-scenes access and exclusive shows, head on over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsigned pop punk let us know in the comments who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see thank you all so much